I mean, basketball was life for me at one point in my life, you know. Basketball was all I woke up, saw for almost 14 years of my life. Two to play in the half. Larkin, dribble penetrates, down low, slam dunk. Rafael Akpajuri. When I met him, you know, he was like a big brother to me, you know. So he talked to me about everything about school, basketball, and I was really, I was really happy, you know, just meeting someone, you know, who is from Nigeria, you know, in the weight room, he was one of the strongest guys, you know, like benching, you know, every day, like he's uh, putting up numbers. You know, the, the man knows that, you know, the plays and everything and always ready to play, like, you know. Collegiate basketball, I actually learned the discipline of being a, an athlete and uh, the discipline that has requ required in sports to be successful. Uh, nobody really brought me into boxing. Um, nobody really brings anybody into boxing. You know, boxing is a unique sport of its own. Um, I've always been fascinated in, about the, the combat sports. Uh, for some reason, I had an inkling that I would either be in the MMA, MMA fighter, or a boxer. You know, I just didn't know how it would happen or, you know, what process it would take. In Nigeria, you know, like things happen and everything is being settled with a, with a fist fight. He told me too many stories of how he got into a fist fight back, back home. You know, like every time he goes to play um, soccer, he goes to play basketball, there's always a fist fight. I did the boxing classes with the uh, with the ladies and the guys, you know, the regular people. And the way he was hitting, hitting the bag, you know, draw attention to a coach. And I, when I turned professional, I came up to um, Coach Glenn Johnson, who has guided me through all my fights as a professional. I met Raphael at an amateur show. Um, he was being trained by a friend of mine, um, and he told me that he had this big heavyweight. His coach is, is a guy that, Glenn Johnson, I mean, you, you have a coach like that who, I mean, everybody knows, you know, what he has done in the boxing, you know. So, you know, having a coach like that who, who have seen everything and, and tells people like, hey, this kid has a bright future. I mean, that says it all. Yeah, he was pretty raw. He was very, very bad. Um, I mean, I think he told me at that time he was already boxing for two years and I couldn't believe it because he obviously, didn't learn anything for the two years that he'd been boxing. And um, so I was really getting a guy who was the first day in the gym. I start teaching him the fundamentals, the day one stuff. Now, you know, it take a while, it's, you know, it take a while for him to start grasp what I'm saying, cause he's coming from a whole different set where you're basically just fighting off athleticism. He would just, you know, going out there and fight for his dear life. But when you're in the boxing ring, you're gonna realize real quick that boxing is all about skill. And when you get tagged a few times with a few right hands, you learn that lesson real quick and you go back to the fundamentals. He really get a good concept of, um, of what I've been teaching him. He have a great understanding of it now. I really see his skill set coming in together. His fundamentals are there. Every time I go home, I've probably watched every boxer, every champion, you know, just watching them, picking something. Every time I come to the gym, I bring something new that Glenn can say, oh, that's good or that's bad or, I'll find a way to implement them into my into my uh, my skill set. Um, I don't think there's any boxer who just started boxing four years ago that's currently nine and old and getting the buzz that Rafael gets. Ran random people would think that it's just luck, but it really isn't luck. You know, there's a process to it. You know, from film watching to practicing every day to fighting every day to you know, following the fundamentals or holding the discipline in the ring and outside of the ring. And, and I try to make myself a well-rounded fighter so that regardless of what comes up, I'm ready to go. At some point in, in my in basketball, I was listed as a 6'10 guy. Um, I'm actually 6'9", I list myself as a 6'8", um, just so people can feel a little better about accepting fights. Um, I'm 260 pounds, and I'm not a slouch 260 pounds, I'm actually a moving and athletic 260 pounds. For someone to accept a fight against me, they really have to be in their right mind. Um, I don't blame them. I wouldn't accept a fight against me if I was them. But, you know, it's the sport of boxing. You know, anything that happen, one punch can change anything. How you want to go in the ring with a 6'10 guy, you know, all muscles, like, could move his feet. And then when you start hearing like, oh, he played soccer, oh, he played basketball, oh, he played football, then boxing, ah, oh, come on, that's a lot. I know who I'm going to fight in five years for big money. 
they know who I am in the gyms. So I don't expect them to accept a fight against me or call out against me right now because that would be a derailment of their careers. Um, you know, so long as you keep growing the way how, and the pace that they've been growing. Uh, I mean, I see him going all the way. The moment he turned pro, now they told him that you cannot lose. And, and now you have every of your fight has to be a KO. And, and his skill and technique, everything has been proven, you know, every day. Regardless of what happens, you know, we're going to be a heavyweight, I'm going to be the heavyweight champion of the world in, in a very short period of time. We gotta keep moving forward. If one disappointment comes, another two other doors will open up for us. So that's where we are. If you know him, I'm telling you, like, he's a guy that he don't stop, you know. And now he has this saying, you know, that every time, you know, when we when we talk to him, we just, he just keeps saying it. He, he will always say, we move, move. You know, no matter what happens, he just say, we move. And I was just live. I'm like, okay, we move. Um, we move is a, is a lingo that actually came up um, um, last year. It's, it's more of a, a Nigerian thing, you know. So it's just a reminder to myself that, you know, there are bigger things ahead and there are more positive things ahead that we have to look up to and look forward to. I, I just know that, you know, there's nothing stopping him. And definitely he's going to get a tighter shot soon. So, you know, it's so many lessons I've learned. There's so many things I've learned about myself. Um, that I, I would have not have learned if I had stayed back in my comfort zone in my daddy's house in Nigeria. 